depending on your point of view, this is either the best or worst time ever to be the face of network news. Our next guest would know he anchors the top-rated world news tonight here on ABC. Please welcome David Muir. Hi, David. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good to be with you, Jimmy. You know, that is a good question. I mean, I think there's uh, no shortage of things to talk about, that's for sure, every night at 6.30. But I feel kind of badly when people see me walking down the street towards them. I think they think I'm just going to bring them even more bad news. Is but... that right? You feel like a harbinger of death? <laughs> well, you know, I, I do recognize and I hope that uh, even in sort of an unsettling time in this country, and wow, this has really been a prolonged moment, hasn't it, um, that, that we're doing something to help um, calm people down, reassure them that we're just going to get through this at some point. Um, but, but it is, it is, I, and I recognize it every single night. I try to remember who we're talking to and we're in people's living rooms and kitchens. And I hope, I hope that we've been calm and steady and no matter how dire the facts are that we're, that we're reassuring people that we'll get to the other side of this. Well, obviously you have, because a lot of people are watching and the show's doing very, very well. I think you were like the most watched show on all of television over the summer, which is an incredible thing, you know, especially in this day and age where people are going and watching streaming and all these 24-hour cable channels, and uh, people are coming to you for the news. And the cheer, the tonnage is what I wonder about, because I have a, you know, I don't have to cover the news of the day. We could do whatever we want. We choose to talk about what stories we want to talk about. But for you, like, I know you, are you still having to rewrite the broadcast moments before air all the time? I mean, it, it, you know, it used to be sort of, you know, an anomaly on a big breaking news night, but we, we really do sort of throughout the news every single night, right up until the moment we come on the air. And anyone who sort of knows me knows that I'm in sort of the pages that I'm about to read through the, through the entire newscast. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned being the most watched program, and I don't think that that's because of me or the team here, even though I love them. There have been so many brave people working from home and coming in with their masks since this pandemic started. I really think, uh, Jimmy, and I know that you, un you believe this too, that one of the silver linings about such an unsettling time in the country is that, that our viewers and Americans actually are hungry. For, for information and for the truth and for facts. And I, I think that that is one of the silver linings in a difficult time for our country. And, you know, listen, we've got a once in a century pandemic. We've got an economy being tested, tens of millions out of work. And then you throw on top of that a presidential election. And I, I do feel for people at home, uh, but I do recognize that, you know, we've got a responsibility here every night. And, you know, We've talked a lot about going on the road so often, for so many years here, that's sort of the DNA of what we do. We take the news all over the world. And I, I've recognized that since this pandemic began, um, I've been coming into the studio really ever since the start. I have a, have a studio at home just in case, but I've, I've been you know, blessed in that I haven't had the virus. So I've been able to come in with the few who've been able to come in too. Um, and, and I recognize that it's kind of, you know, the inverse is kind of true. I think the audience expected to see us out in the field for so long. And, and now I, I, I sense that just showing up, being here at 6.30 every night, at least I hope, it, it, it is sort of a calming presence and, and hopefully somewhat reassuring, um, given, as you say, uh, no shortage of news uh, yeah. from which to choose. I mean, like, you know, every night, every night we enter the show three or four minutes heavy with, with news. I'm sure there is an element of that. And I wonder, if does that mean you will travel less when, God willing, all this craziness subsides? I think I think once we turn the corner on this, uh, I'll be back. You're out back there. out on the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I, I, it's it's funny. I've probably spent more time at the desk than than since I started not only in this role but but in years here as sort of like a, a, a traveling reporter. But you know, I know how interested in politics and in, in and in the country you are, and you use humor to bring light to all these important issues. But I just have to say, in this time, I, I think it's really important for journalists uh, to have each other's back. And, uh, you know, for example, I, I mentioned our dedicated team. Kristen Welker of NBC did such a great job with that final debate. I think she did a service to the country by, by helping to sort of navigate a more coherent debate, um, more, of a, more of a debate over policy than certainly what we saw uh, in the first debate. And I think that we have to have each other's backs. I mean, this is an important time in our country and, and the news news. You uh, were the first network news anchor to interview the president at the beginning of the pandemic. We have a clip of that. Let's play that. Don't forget, the cupboard was bare. The other administration, the last administration, left us nothing. 
you know, you're three years into your first term. Yeah. You're now applying for the job again. What did you do when you became president to restock those cupboards that you say were bare? Well, I'll be honest, uh, I have a lot of things going on. <laughs> he has a lot of things going on. He's very, very busy. I also feel like your hair looks like he thinks his hair looks like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> but I did think, you know, that's interesting in that moment that you speak of there. We had heard a lot of the critique of the Obama administration, and I thought it was just an obvious moment to to press, you know, once you've been the president for three and a half years and you're asking to be reelected, you know, it's, it's what have you done, not what did the president before you do. Um, and there was something else really interesting about that interview, Jimmy. You know, toward the end, I remember asking President Trump, you know, is he comfortable with the idea that this election uh, could very well be a referendum on his handling of the pandemic? And he sort of paused and he said, well, I am and I'm not. And, <laughs> and I, you, you laugh, but I knew in that moment that the president recognize that that's very well what could happen and, and look where we are just a week out from election day. Voters, issue number one is coronavirus, the pandemic and everything that's interconnected, you know, the economy, jobs, um, health care. Uh, it's really touched us all. And I, I think America's exhausted. And I don't think there's one side of the country that believes in staying closed and wearing masks and the other side wants to reopen. Um, I, I think that most people are somewhere in the middle. They want to get the economy back up and running, but they want to be safe, and they want to know their kids are safe going to school. And then Thanksgiving, you know, now a couple weeks away, what's that going to look like? Are grandparents finally going to be able to, you know, see their grandchildren? I know the, the conversations that we have in, you know, in my family. So yeah, right. um, we, we just have to remember that every night. I know you got a big night coming up on election night. Will you do me a favor? If Joe Biden, in the eventuality that Joe Biden wins, rather than saying ABC projects Joe Biden is the winner. Will you say ABC projects Donald Trump is the loser? <laughs> well, I think, I think that's where that open will play. We interrupt this special coverage for a message from Jimmy Kimmel. Okay. You've been pushing for that open for I'll years. I'll be standing by. I will be standing right here at my desk ready for you. Just give me the signal. <laughs> and by the way, I think you'll have opportunity over, over the course of maybe several nights for that because this is going to be a really tricky election. I, right. I, the, the number we reported tonight, 69 million Americans have already voted early. That's about half of the entire vote four years ago. And I think there are 28 states that don't even start counting those Malin votes, those absentee votes until Election Day, including some of the key battlegrounds, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. They start counting on Election Day. So yeah. one thing to look for, Jimmy, uh, Florida and North Carolina, they begin processing those early votes uh, um, days before Election Day. So we might have some clues as to how Election Night could go. But if we don't get clues from those states, then it could be, um, well... Yeah. You you'll have, well, might have a lot of opportunities to contribute. Yes, it could be a Christmas decision. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. World News Tonight, weeknights here on ABC. David Muir, everybody. Thanks, David. And we're right back with her. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Uh-oh. Oh, oh.